Good morning. My name's Jane Grog, and I realize that I am standing between you and lunch. So I will uh, try to be uh, expedient in my use of time. So what a great honor to follow some great community activists. I want to touch on how to be an informed and engaged citizen and how that relates to government. Of course, our founding fathers created our whole government structure to be founded in the cornerstone of engaged and informed citizens. Let's start with civility. Um, I think a lot of us experience a variation of meetings, what happens at those, and uh, we see situations where there are uncomfortable uh, exchanges of opinions. And so I would say in giving advice through this session to always try and advance civility. Your fellow citizens will appreciate it, the electeds will appreciate it, and all those that have to be involved in the meeting. Uh, will appreciate any attempts at civility and help to move the conversation forward in a very productive way. And if you feel like this lady who's looking for lost civility, uh, I would say it is out there. Uh, just we only see the negative. You know that's what gets portrayed so often is is the negative things in the community, and it's contagious, so sharing that sense of um, understanding and compassion and listening to one another is, is helpful. And the old adage of seek first to understand and then to be understood. So I think those who are trying to have a meaningful dialogue are often genuinely interested in what the other person is saying. So listening and returning that favor so that they can they can have a more civil platform in discussion. So let's look first at being informed. Follow the issues that are most important to you, and that, of course, is what you're all here today, following things that are important and close to your heart, and following along what's available and information in the community. And of course, use multiple sources of information. So whether or not it's a workshop or reading things in the news or on TV, social media, uh, also check local government websites. On the picture here is a snapshot of Sarasota County's website, but any of the local government websites, find out what's going on. They often maintain calendars and schedule events as well as background information on the types of reports that are gonna be coming before their boards. Also, Sarasota County manages a neighborhood online directory. Uh, we are seeking to increase our number of contacts and also always update our contacts. Uh, we've had the privilege of working on debris management post Irma for about six or seven weeks, and so we're getting ready to add a lot of new contacts uh, of the friends that we made through that process this year. And we offer classes on Sarasota County government. So our Civics 101 program is a behind the scenes look at county government. How are the programs funded? How do they operate? Who's involved? What are the top issues and projects that are going on? Those are oftentimes offered at other local governments. Uh, there's also the Citizens Law Enforcement Academy that's operated by our Sheriff's Office and a program uh, that some of you may be familiar with is the Water Stewards Program that's operated through the University of Florida IFAS Extension Office. There are classes to explain how things work and you get to see the behind the scenes and, and really understand so you're more informed and you feel more comfortable sharing your opinions once you have that information um, in your head and in your heart. Here's a little snapshot of some of the fun things we do with our civics. Take them everywhere from our fire stations and our libraries and our parks and show them how the machines are operated uh, and also a mock planning commission meeting. That's a further way of learning about how to be engaged. You really get to see how to prepare your thoughts and what are the, the processes for operating an actual uh, board meeting and how that works. So let's shift now to the be engaged part. This, earlier I was talking about getting to know 
information. These meetings um, and workshops are on many different topics. Uh, they're hosted all the time, depending on project schedule. And as you're probably aware, there's usually an increase in meetings during our seasonal time because we want to catch as many residents as possible on those. Other things, writing emails and letters to elected officials, speaking at public hearings, those are effective way to get attention, uh, meeting with elected officials. So while elected officials can't talk with each other outside of meetings about uh, agenda items, they can talk to staff and to constituents. So invite them to your association meeting or ask for one-on-one -on -one time if you have a topic that you would like to share information with them. We have several advisory boards at Sarasota County. There are also advisory boards for uh, other local governments, and I'll touch on that in a moment. And of course, organizing your friends and neighbors, as many of you clearly are. These public meetings I'm gonna touch on now have to do with formal board or advisory board meetings. Uh, the state statute requires that there is a period of time held at every public meeting that is called open to the public. It's usually limited in time and that depends on the uh, local government's uh, establishment of their rules of procedure, maybe about three minutes. And you can use that time to talk about items that are not on the agenda that you wanna bring to the board's attention or you can talk about something that is not part of a public hearing. So maybe it's something that's gonna be decided by consent or discussed only by the board. But there's always an opportunity at every meeting to share your thoughts and opinions. Those public hearings I was referring about, there are certain things that require formal testimony. Those may be land use changes like a rezone, a budget amendment, or rate adjustments. Those all require time for public uh, input that may have a little bit more time. And when you sign the card to speak, you're actually swearing the oath that you swear and affirm that the testimony that you're going to give is truthful um, and that is a legal requirement of the public hearings. There is a special kind of a public hearing that I wanna to touch on and let you know is a quasi-judicial hearing. And the reason why it's unique is sometimes citizens think that perhaps the, the deciding body, the board or the planning commission is holding back in replying to citizens who have questions ahead of time. There's actually a requirement that all the information that they use to decide this type of project has to happen during the hearing. So it's called ex parte communication. It's a formal legal term that um, requires uh, or restricts them from having conversations outside of the hearing. And these relate to things like development proposals. So when the planning commission or a, a board or a commission is making a decision on a specific piece of property, all of that information has to take place during the hearing time. Now let's look at advisory boards. These are boards that are um, appointed by the elected body. So in Sarasota County, they're appointed by the county commission. And it's to use the local expertise and community perspective to, um, to give input and share information and make recommendations on topics that will come before the board. So there are many different technical topics that a, an elected body has to decide upon, and they can't all be experts in every topic. So they rely on advisory boards to have uh, scientists or engineers or well drillers or health experts or just local community members to help them vet through the information and make recommendations to them. The commission makes the final decision on policy, but these boards help them to um, make those decisions. Um, Sarasota County keeps a list of our advisory councils and appointed boards online. You can check those out if you're interested in serving on one. There's over 30 of them for Sarasota County. There's a wide range of topics. And what to expect in an advisory board? They have regular meetings as well. They're also bound by the sunshine rules that the discussion that is take that takes place 
uh, has to happen at a meeting and not between members outside of the meeting. And they make an annual report to the board. Uh, and many of them also have students taking active roles in government uh, placed on each of those boards. And they are full acting members. And they uh, learn the information along with the other members. They're high school students that have gone through some leadership training. And they get the opportunity to participate as a full member on those advisory boards as well. And so I will move on. Um, and finally, I just want to point out that, you know, community strengthening and things that you can do in your community or in your neighborhood are bringing together people with similar ideas, but also listening to those who have different ideas and different perspectives in an effort to move the dialogue forward and try to find better solutions for our community. So with that, I would like to transition to our next, um, next piece here, which is the recognition of the Neighborhood Challenge Awards. This year is our first year for the Neighborhood Challenge Awards. And it is a beautiful day to be a neighbor. We have lots of great neighborhoods in Sarasota County, and, and we are pleased to uh, recognize several of them today. What I'd like to do is I'll give you a little brief overview of our, our winners and I'll ask them to come up at the end and we'll do a photo op and um, allow for um, you all to get to lunch here pretty quick. So this effort has been a collaboration between our office, the Sarasota County Neighborhood Services Group, as well as the Sarasota County IFAS Extension and Sustainability Office, and the Florida Par Department of Health in Sarasota County. So there are three um, category areas of being involved, being healthy, and being green. And we were uh, able to use a grant funding opportunity uh, of another organization that developed this online tool to help track and manage the project. So the effort has been to both recognize and encourage neighborhoods to do great work in the community. We know that many neighborhoods are already doing fantastic things, so we wanted a way to recognize their efforts and also provide information and encourage new ones um, to develop further and try and expand their activities going forward. There's a point system uh, in the Neighborhood Challenge that includes points for completing specific actions, uh, educating their members, also doing innovative ideas. Some of them have done grant projects and in implemented innovative uh, ways to improve their community and also sharing all of this information on social media. One of the key components of this challenge has been our neighborhood resource guide. It's a guide that helps the, those who are participating get ideas of things they can do to get points, but it's not just for them. The guide is for anybody in the community to uh, use as a resource to figure out what, what are resources that we can use, speakers that could come to our neighborhood, uh, programs that we could implement, classes we could attend, or uh, projects that we could implement, and how can we figure out how to do this. So now I'm going to tell you about the three award winter winners. They are the Mayaka Valley Ranches Improvement Association, the Arlington Park Neighborhood Association, and the Mission Estates Homeowners Association. I have a slide on each of these to share with you um, some of the work that they've done. They've also received recognition from our county commission just recently. And in addition to the recognition, we're giving them uh, an award for, uh, for them to use and strengthen their community even further. So first I wanna touch on the Mayaka Valley Ranches Association. Um, they're in the area east of I-75, very close to Mayaka State Park. Uh, this is a large uh, lot community where some of the projects they've been working on are the air potato beetle program to address their overgrown areas, uh, increasing their tree canopy through a neighborhood grant project, a multi-use trail system with distance markers and native plant signs for education and also encouraging health, 
and a volunteerism, monthly volunteer days, and a, and a junior volunteer group in their community. Arlington Park Neighborhood Association is in the city of Sarasota. Some of their uh, key projects have been a tree mitigation ordinance that they've worked on with the city of Sarasota, a pesticide moratorium and better coordination with city and county staff. After seeing a concern in their, uh, in their local park, uh, they've worked together and shown that true spirit of community organization to see the change that they hope for in their community. Increasing walkability through uh, a community map and an information guide, and also community outreach and collaboration um, through signage and events and a community bulletin board. Mission Estates is located uh, in sort of the Nokomis and Laurel area of Sarasota County. Uh, some of their neighborhood projects include uh, Florida-friendly yards and nest principles in mulching efforts and maintenance buffers in their communities, an organized fitness group, and waterways resource. They've had some uh, neighborhood grant projects to increase the uh, water quality in their stormwater ponds. And I love the name, the Flamingo Friday, the community-wide social uh, in their community. So with that, I would love to invite uh, those winners to come up and we'll um, share the certificates with them. Um, and as they walk up, I want to tell you about an honorable mention and another neighborhood. If you come on up, we'll do a picture. Um, is our Mockingbird Parish and Glenna Bloomquist has been energizing that area. And so, in addition to um, in addition to our three winners, we wanted to also say thank you and encourage continued growth for the uh, new neighborhood group as well. So thank you to all these groups. <laughs> <laughs>